we decided to take the afternoon off and go get DEXA scans. DEXA scans. Oh! With a DEXA scan, you can get out of thinking about a general number like weight. Whether you want to lose weight or whether you want to gain weight, the question then becomes, what kind of weight do you want to lose? Is it fat you want to lose? Is it muscle you want to gain? I'm suspecting it's one of the two or a combination of them both. You actually have specific numbers. Oh, the bell or the alarm is going off. I'm supposed to yeah, put on my seatbelt. Seat I'm not the greatest with that. The DEXA yeah, safe and sound. You'll get a body fat percentage. You'll understand what your lean mass is. You'll also understand how much fat you're storing on the body. And I believe there's even a couple other readings that we will get from the DEXA scan. With clarity, you don't have to second guess or doubt what is occurring as far as the transformation or the results that you are shooting for. This is just really to understand where you're starting from so you have a baseline measurement, a starting point. You can see if you're making progress without the confusion of am I losing weight or gaining weight and is that a good thing or a bad thing? What am I losing or what am I gaining? That clarity allows you to know exactly what's taking place in your body. The DEXA scan happens to be a great way in which you can go about getting the specifics and set yourself up for success with less mental frustration and less doubt and confusion oh we're going to body spec and we'll put that in the description below seven minute meditation it's getting very serious this is how we enter the alien spaceship Go. I'm gonna go ahead and go over information that apply to both of you and then when I need to direct my attention to one of you I'll go ahead and do so. So first things first your scans and so the white that you see there is the bone the green that you see there is the lean tissue Which does include muscle organs fluid tendon, basically everything in your body That's not the fat tissue or the bone and the red that you see there That's the fat tissue and nothing else incorporated So at top here you can see total body fat percentage total mass in pounds fat tissue in pounds lean tissue in pounds And your bone mineral content that's saying how much the outer shell of your skeleton Leaves from head to toe. So these three masses added together gives you this complete mass. First, I'll direct my attention to you. So if you're curious to know where you fall under with the people who scan with us, mm -hmm. this box is yours here. And just keep in mind that all this data is very much skewed towards the leaner side because it's only a comparison with body spike, not the general population. Okay. And most of the people who scan with us are fitness enthusiasts. So what you would do is you would plug in your age and then plug in your total body fat percentage. This is considered our average. So this would be above average, below average. And same information for you, you would plug in your age. This would be considered women's average, above average, below average, you would plug in your age and your total body fat percentage. Now, moving on to the regional assessment. Regional assessment is looking at all of these top numbers, your specific numbers, but breaking it down to different regions. So mm -hmm. the arms, the legs, the trunk, the android, and the gynoid. I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly sketch that on you. Lower abdominal region, gynoid, yeah, it'll get uploaded. In order to read this, it says if we had just gotten your arms, scan those and give you the results. Gotten your legs, scan those and give you the results. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to talk more about your android and gynoid in just a second, but before we do, we're going to talk about the estimated resting metabolic rate. The reason we say it's an estimate because it's based off your lean tissue. Because it's an estimate, we're going to look at this as the ballpark around amount number of calorie intake that you should have just at complete rest. This intake is not your caloric goal. You definitely want to add an account for daily exercise activity. This is literally how much your body burns if you were just to do nothing for 24 mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. Just lay down, definitely not a caloric goal. Now, we have your android fat distribution, gynoid fat distribution. We take these two numbers, divide it together, and it gives us your AG ratio. This is your waist to hip ratio. Now, we do like this number to be under one, which both are, which is great. That means that you are currently hosting most of your fat tissue in the gynoid area, more so than in the android. And we want less in the android because that's where we host a lot of the important organs. But still focusing on the android area, here I'm gonna 
would direct my attention to you. The blue and the red, that's the entered area, but the blue is subcutaneous fat. That's the fat that's underneath the skin and all over the body. But what we're focusing now is the visceral adipose tissue. It's the red portion. You cannot see this, you cannot pinch it, but very important to monitor because it hosts and surrounds all of the important organs. Mm -hmm. You have reached the goal of getting to zero. However, we do have a bracket, a recommended bracket of 0.5, so half a pound and below. But if ever this number fluctuates up and down, as long as you're under 0.5, you're in good standing. Mm. And the reason I say that is because this number tends to change and fluctuate with many different factors. Mm. Diet, processed sugar and alcohol, but also stress, mm. sleep deprivation, hormone change, even mm. genetics. And it's only at two pounds and above when we start getting an increased risk of metabolic disease. Oh. Now for men, it's a little different. The numbers are a little different. This is your mass in pounds for the visceral adipose tissue. Now, for men, we do recommend this number to be under one pound and below. As long as you're under one pound, you're in good standing. For men, it's only at 2.7 and above when we start getting an increased risk of the body. I'm gonna go on to bone report with you. This is nationally comparing your bone strength with the people in your demographic, which means age, gender, and ethnicity. With that information, it composes your Z-score. Your Z-score puts you under this category here, in which is saying that your bones are more dense. It's 69 to about 75% of the people in your demographic. Definitely above average. Emily, for you. Mm -hmm. So for your bone report, nationally comparing the bone strength to the people in your demographic, which means age, gender, and ethnicity. With that information, it composes your C score. Now your C score actually puts you a little closer to the higher end of the same category, in which is saying that your bones are more dense than about 80 to 93% of the people in your mm -hmm. demographic. Definitely a good thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, and those are your bodies in a snapshot. Interesting. Now it's time for our DEXA scan conclusion. We have a couple questions that we would like to answer before we go. Question number one is, how was your overall experience? My overall experience was really good. Uh, the place was super clean, which is really important to me. The staff were friendly and very informative, and the scan barely took any time. Only took seven minutes for each of us. And then in the end, they gave us a detailed breakdown of the results, which is what I really liked the most. Question number two is, what does the DEXA scan measure? I have this cool folder here that BodySpec gave us, and on the cover, it answers that exact question in detail. What we measure, fat tissue, lean tissue, visceral fat, bone density, then it goes on to say, and more. Well, the and more that I would like to add to is a very cool measurement that they gave us on top of all of those, which was the RMR, resting metabolic rate, which is how many calories we're burning at rest. And and question number three is, why is it helpful to get a DEXA scan? We narrowed it down to the three top reasons. Number one, get a baseline measurement. Number two, to get to know where you're starting depending on your health and fitness goals. And number three, to track your progress. But of course, there's so many more reasons why you should get a DEXA scan. Question number four is, would we recommend getting a DEXA scan? The answer to that question, Emily, is hell yeah. yeah. We say yeah. Yes, a couple reasons why is it's a great reality check. It would probably be a great idea to find out where I was at if I want to go somewhere, just like on GPS navigation. If I'm in New York and I want to get to LA, I need to know where I'm at, which is New York, and then where LA is and how I'm going to get there. Question number five is for you guys. Have you ever done a DEXA scan? If so, we would love to hear about your experience. So fill it out down below in the comment section. We want to hear your feedback. And remember, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button, subscribe, and share this video with your friends and family. We'll see you in the next one. Signing off. Adios. Sayonara. Hasta la vista. Bye-bye.